Welcome everybody to this uh, first iMotion conference. My name is uh, Salim Afar, I'm president of the Eurotrans, and today I will be presenting you our uh, federation, what we do and uh, why we do it. So uh, let's start with the beginning. In uh, 1968 in, uh, in Paris, our federation was founded as le Comité Européen des Associations de Constructeurs d'Engrenages et d'Éléments de Transmission and it quickly evolved toward a more European and international uh, organization, how we are going to be seeing today. So I'm very happy to, uh, to, to lead this organization uh, with our vice president, Mr. Andre Tuswadner from the Swiss Memo Association. And uh, together we are uh, uh, supported by different associations in uh, a lot of different European countries. We have the Swiss Association, the British Association, Finnish one, Italian, Turkish, the Germans, the Belgium Association, and finally, as historical partner, we have the French Association, uh, Artema, with us. So we are sitting all together uh, on a board with the, these uh, different members, and we are discussing the different subjects that we are going to be presenting today in this uh, presentation. So first of all, uh, which are our members in which different sectors we are uh, active? So we have members from the purely mechanical power transmission uh, sectors with the companies producing couplings, bearings, belt and chain drives, shaft, uh, card and shafts and brakes as well. Then we have the uh, gearbox uh, group. This can be gear wheels uh, alone for different industries, the gear drives and also the transmission systems. As the technology evolved, we uh, hosted more and more companies from the linear technology and the uh, electrical power transmission uh, technologies as well, with the producer of motors, geared motors, but also frequency inverters. Uh, today, uh, what's the Eurotrans in, in, in a few different numbers? We are going to go more in, in, in details, but today we have members from more than 600 different enterprises that represent 40 billion uh, euros of, uh, of turnover, including the bearing industry, but also the automotive business and uh, electrical uh, sectors. And uh, to give you an idea in terms of uh, people, this is 160,000 people that are working in this, uh, in this sector uh, through our different uh, members. We are lucky to have members that are very dynamic as they represent, uh, they have more than 60% of their uh, products that are exported to different countries within Europe, but also in a worldwide uh, perspective as well. And um, it's a very important sector within the European mechanical engineering uh, itself, because the power transmission today is uh, in between five and seven a person. But it's important to highlight that the products produced by our members are used in different industries. They are used also in uh, different applications, so it's it's wider and larger than five, seven person as we are uh, directly involved in a lot of different activities. We go on now with the with numbers of the mechanical engineering uh, industry within within Europe with fact and figures. So. Uh, we have today more than 4 million employees that are working. These are the last number that we have from 2020. And the industry of mechanical engineering as a whole represents 770 billion uh, euros. It's a, one more time a very dynamic uh, sector. We, we have more than 45% four, of products that trade within the, the European Union and 36% that are exported uh, on a worldwide level. The Eurotrans have three main uh, pillars. So the first one is the networking. As I said before, we are connecting the different members from different associations. We are conducting a lot of market data statistics because we are members from different countries. So they, they provide us back information on the situation, trends from their own perspective, their own market. And we are collecting all of this information together to provide uh, a valuable report back to our members. And the last point, which is very important, is the, the knowledge, the education and, and, and training. So we, we, we give back the different knowledge that we collect from our industry members uh, to make a more uh, powerful and, uh, I would say, uh, more knowledge-based association. 
our uh, targets today. So we are trying to to involve a maximum of our different association, but we are also open to to new uh, new members. So uh, in the same time, we are uh, following the different activities that are done without the, within these different countries. So we are collecting these uh, this information and discussing them uh, together. We also have an international aspect as we represent our industry on a, a worldwide level with having discussion with uh, our uh, different organization on a worldwide perspective with, for example, in the United States, the AGM Association, but also with the Japanese Association, Chinese Association as well, discussing the trends on a worldwide level and see how we can work together, uh, representing the European industry as well. The main targets that we have uh, now as a Eurotrans, uh, first of all, obviously, is the, the exchanging and sharing the different uh, the different information from different uh, members. We have a, a board that is uh, sitting on a regular basis to discuss the different subjects where we are defining some common issues from different members from their own perspective, and we we see if this this could be uh, brought to a higher level uh, on a European uh, level. In the same time, we are representing uh, the industry as one voice for the European. Union Commission, and where we are bringing information and feedback from our different members. We are uh, also uh, working on uh, reinforcing or building the leadership of our power transmission on European level, but based on, on knowledge and uh, technical uh, leadership, I will, I will say. Uh, we are also working on this, and I will come back on this point because it's a very important point for us uh, today on uh, educating young people. Uh, most of our members are sharing the same problem today. It's more and more difficult to have uh, members or to have uh, people within the university that are willing to, to join our industry. So we are trying to build back this attractivity. Um, working on, on, on education programs, working on a lot of different programs. So we have more and more people that are trained uh, to work in this sector and to build up the, the future of our industry. And the last point, as I said before, is we are discussing with the other associations, participating to their own programs and their own uh, conferences. Uh, it can be China and Japan and United States as well, but also a lot of different uh, national level associations within the world. Now, the, the, the chance that we, that, that, that we have uh, with our uh, members, the first point is that we have a, a customer and market-oriented research and development because we are very close to our different members, so we can uh, follow up the different uh, trends. In the same time, this gives us a global thinking because we have members from a lot of uh, different places, and then with this global thinking, we can act locally, sharing back the information to our different members so they can apply it within their own association and their own uh, market as well. This, this whole uh, network gives us a very a, a global presence uh, worldwide. And then we are working on, I would say, three main uh, subjects these days. I will be coming back on this point uh, forward on the presentation is the digitalization, where we are uh, very lucky to have members from the mechanical industry, electronical industry, electrical as well, and we are trying to combine these different sectors to go toward a more digitalized uh, industry. This will obviously bring us to a more uh, sustainable uh, industry as well, as with this uh, trying to use the digitalization to produce more green products, where we are able to measure the impact of the different production, different components used, and uh, establishing a, a, a blue competence for more green products. And uh, finally, as I said before, we work a lot on the energy management, which is a very important subject, obviously, uh, nowadays with all the geopolitical pressure on our energy sector. So we work on to have more efficient machineries. We work on to have uh, new laws and new regulation to, to push the different members or industry to use more efficient uh, products and produce more efficient machineries. And the last point for this uh, one more time is to, uh, to, to go toward the industry 4.0. Uh, Europe, Europe as a, a driver of uh, transformation and geopolitical player, as I said before, now it's, it's very important 
we we see with all the different uh, uh, geopolitical pressure that we have uh, worldwide that is very important for members to, to tie up together and to to re-establish this uh, European leadership on a lot of different subjects and uh, we as Eurotrans believe in this different uh, in this different subject this can be the green deal with establishing the climate neutrality by 2050 also the transformation of the EU industry toward a greener uh, industry as well with establishing uh, in the future uh, new laws and new regulation like uh, what's discussing nowadays the carbon uh, border tax. Uh, we also work a lot on the digital uh, economy to make sure that the European reach uh, European data sovereignty to, to keep and use these different uh, data and manage them together uh, within uh, a framework of actions within the industry. So we we want to have all these uh, different data shared together and uh, to, to keeping them together to to make sure that we have this uh, this uh, sovereignty uh, the, the last point is the international trade so as you all know we have a lot of different uh, uh, trading agreement i've been discussing for for a lot of different uh, years we we believe in this uh, different trade agreement this can be between the european union and china uh, the, the european and the united states as well but this can be a wider level on a lot of different regions, the Mercosur, for example, for uh, South and Central America, but this can be subjects in the future that can be discussed for other regions. The, this subject I said discussed on the European level, so just to give you an overview on what's going on on the uh, European Union and what's being discussed, just to give you an idea on how dynamic the European Union is on this different subject for the, the Green Deal. For example, we have uh, 90 different proposals that have been uh, announced uh, this far and more than 28 that are uh, close subject now as we have 15 that are already adopted and 13 that are uh, yet to be adopted on a close uh, on, on, on a close future. The same thing for the digitalization of, of the European Union where we have now uh, 13 uh, proposition are already adapted, so it's it's already existing, it's already here, this is um, already being applied. 25 person proposal are uh, yet to be adopted in a close uh, in a close future as well. So this future is here, we are discussing it and seeing it as a priority uh, already, and you can see we have a lot of proposals that are within discussion and will come back in coming a very close uh, future for a greener uh, Europe and also for a, a more digitalized and adapted uh, Europe to the digital age. Uh, we have a lot of uh, big subjects that, uh, that we have uh, discussed now for the 2000, uh, 2030 uh, targets, the so-called uh, Fit for 55 percent package. We have a lot of different uh, existing uh, laws and regulation that are already here and uh, are, are having uh, regular, um, I would say, updates and, and revision uh, for our industry. We can talk about, for example, the uh, Energy Efficiency Directive. As you all know, in July, we had a very important update for having uh, more efficient motor used on the on the European, uh, on European level, but this is also uh, the, the same for a lot of different uh, subjects that are discussed today, where we have, as we said before, the CO2 border adjustment mechanism as well. And we have a lot of different subjects on the uh, a better use of our energy, greener use of, uh, of, uh, of energy. To come back to, to, to one point we've been discussing uh, together, the border adjustment mechanism. So this is a, a, a new subject that I will that is discussed uh, now and is very important for uh, for our industry. Uh, why? Obviously, because we want to to make sure that all our partners are on the same level. Okay, we are working toward a greener uh, European Union. But if products are keep coming to to Europe with a very low uh, or I would say a very high uh, carbon uh, impact, then it's, uh, we won't be able to reach our our different targets. So what we are trying to do and what is discussed uh, now on European level is to make sure there is an avoidance of carbon leakage and to make sure we put the different level the, the different country on the same uh, on the same level uh, while yet we are facing some some limits and some and some different problems we need to make sure that uh, it's uh, um, complying with the world trade organization and some countries are, are showing some 
protectionism, for example, and we might lose some uh, competitiveness, but this is uh, a goal that uh, we need and uh, will uh, hopefully be reached on the, on the European on the European level. The, to come back to digital strategy on the European level as well, so we, the European uh, Commission now is working more and more on uh, on having a more uh, digital future for our industry and uh, our region as a, as a whole. So the first point is to make sure that we have a harmonized rules for artificial intelligence because we we are into this uh, this era. It's it's happening. It's being used in a lot of different sectors. So we need to make sure everybody is going on the same on the same line and um, and. To, to, to make sure that the high risk application are, are, are controlled and regulate and regulated as well. We have a lot of uh, different uh, uh, new laws on the network and information system security as well. And, uh, and we are, as, as an association are following this uh, subject uh, very, 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 cl very closely as well to make sure this is not an additional burden for companies, but also to make sure that all the mechanical engineering are uh, explicitly, explicitly covered, obviously. And uh, the, the last point is the, the Data Act that is uh, uh, running for, uh, for for many years, many years now, and is uh, uh, yet to be to be to be to be tested and established uh, completely on the on the European level in the very close future. Uh, to come back to European uh, to the Euro Trans Association and, and, and its different member, our our priority. We we've been speaking now for the last few minutes about what's happening on the European level, but uh, from our association perspective, what are the key priorities? So uh, we are in the same line as the European Union. Sustainability is very, very important for us. So we, we discuss this subject on a on regular basis with our different members to see how uh, we can have a, a, greener, uh, a greener industry. We also discuss, as we are lucky to have members from a lot of different countries that are working with a lot of different partners, on the international level, we, we, we discuss on promoting free trade and fight the protectionism, see how we can sit all together, uh, all members of the industry, and fight the protectionism to make sure that, uh, that the priority remain the, uh, remain the technology, remain the, the knowledge. And uh, we are uh, trying to, to, to shape a more digitalized uh, industry as well, so we discuss this. We have a regular discussion this uh, on this subject with our with our board, and um, and the, the the last the, the last two points, which are very uh, important uh, nowadays, nowadays and linked with the previous ones, is to to strengthen the European leadership, having more and more discussion with different association partners, to make sure there is the right understanding, to make sure that uh, we, we reach our uh, our common goals. So we are having regular discussion, as I said before, with the, the US association, for example, colleagues from the, the AGMA, but also Japanese colleagues and a lot of different uh, associations. And the last point, and I want to come back on this uh, one more time, is the the lack of talents for uh, for our industry. This can be on the operators level, working on different machineries, but also on R and D uh, engineers. So it's more and more difficult for our members to 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 find the right people to 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 work within this uh, this factory. This has been a trend for uh, more than 15, uh, 15 years. But we as Eurotrans work a lot on this. We have a lot of different programs uh, that we've been developed. And uh, one of the key programs for this is a training program that we'll be discussing uh, together later on. But we also have on the uh, national level, we have our associations that are uh, establishing more and more connection, more and more bridge with the, the universities in their own countries to make sure that uh, all the different trainings on gears, for example, are up to date, but also to make sure that they're well presented to, to, the, to the students and to, to make sure that the students have enough interest on, on, on these different uh, lessons. So this can be on, the, on sharing the new trends, for example, to bring new interest, but this can also be through different presentation about our different uh, companies to show how our sector is uh, dynamic and how it is uh, uh, attractive and how it is directly linked with the world of today and the future. Another point which is uh, very important is the, uh, 
the, the, the green the, the green deal here uh, so to make sure that different members are walking through the 2050 climate uh, target for uh, for neutrality carbon neutrality so we, we we discuss we discuss that because we believe and we know that our members have the the necessary technology to to reach this uh, these points we have a very dynamic uh, very dynamic uh, members that are following all the different trends and are using the last the last technology within their production but also uh, toward what they produce so we need to make sure that they we are all on the same line for a greener uh, production uh, green production facilities but also for greener technologies so uh, we we also uh, discuss uh, how we can establish our leadership from a technical technological point of view on a free market environment. So what's important for us is to uh, keep this leadership of technology, of, uh, of, of knowledge, of product excellence, and this is how we can, uh, we can shine and keep our leadership on a free market environment. And uh, one more time here, it's a very uh, a key point, but uh, our drive uh, technology sector is a solution provider for the, the, the successful future. So uh, we have members that are um, deeply involved in future technologies. Our members are producing uh, products that are directly used in new technologies in the industry 4.0. So they are directly involved in that. So the uh, European port transmission industry is the future actually, as we are key member of it. We are participating to it. And another subject is the promotion of free uh, of free trade. As I said, uh, as I said before, we discussed with the with different associations. But as a federation ourselves, and uh, based on the feedback that we're having from our different members, it's very important to to, to go um, toward a, a more open market, so a free trade, and to make sure that we are on the on the same level with different markets and different uh, associations within the U.S. and within within China. Uh, as well to make sure that there is a free but also a fair trade between um, our different members between the european members but also uh, players in the us in india in china and all over all over the world so we keep uh, advocating for a more open markets less protectionism uh, from the european union but also from from different uh, countries around the world Shaping the digital trans transition, as I said, as I said before, we our members are shaping it, but we we also make sure that our members are um, up to date with the future different technologies. We make sure that we discuss the future, uh, let's say in advance. So we make sure that uh, that okay, this and this is going to be happening. Uh, what are the different regulations we might need? What are the different um, standard framework that we have to to to, to establish and uh, how we need to to guide how we can guide our members toward this uh, uh, this future and this is why it's very important to have a technological network we have within the industry different commissions that are focusing on uh, on innovation on, on on different trends on different standards so we we discuss that and we make sure that everybody is uh, uh, up to date and and going toward the same the same direction to first uh, well make regulation without reaching over regulation to make sure that the the partners can develop their their, their, their different technologies but also to make sure our members are seizing the different opportunities that are offered by the artificial intelligence so to 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 make a little uh, uh, recap is to the main goal of Eurotrans is to to build a stronger uh, Europe on the industrial level but also on a world wide worldwide level so uh, european remain a, a very very dynamic uh, home market where we we need to be uh, stronger and stronger but as a eurotrans we are also uh, being a voice um, uh, toward uh, global competitors as we are uh, on the same on, on the same level we try to establish rules but not only for our members but for the, the whole industry so uh, to make actually more uh, fair industry and to make sure everybody have the same 
uh, access to, 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 to opportunities, we need to have the right laws, we need to have the right uh, regulations, so we make sure we all play uh, on the same field, but with the same rule as well. So being a rule setter is very, very important. And the last point is to um, bring uh, talents and well-educated uh, people to describe technology, so we make sure we have the, the brain and human resources to establish and build this future. So we have a, a few bases for entrepreneurial success. So the, the, the first point is the strong representation of, uh, of interest, because as I said in the first slide that we have is that we collect the different um, revendication for our members on a national level and we bring it to a more European and international uh, level as well. So we are stronger with our different members. We are stronger as we participate in as one voice in uh, a different organization uh, worldwide. We are also providing uh, competent services where we are uh, uh, providing support to our different members worldwide. This can be for reaching uh, technical information, but this can also be for getting update information or regulation. This can be for reaching different members and this brings me to the last point where we have a vast uh, uh, network where we have highly trained experts we have uh, companies that are leader companies leading companies i would say within their own sector so we, we really have i would say top class members as individual but also as, as companies as well So the targets that we, we, we have now is the networking, analyzing trends, convincing young people to work with us for industry and through different, uh, through different uh, trainings. To go back to training education as uh, the different points that we, that, we are, uh, that we are running, that we are running all together is, uh, this we will uh, cut, I think, in the presentation. And uh, so, yeah, uh, speaking about the speaking about the, the the trainings, we have a lot of new programs that are that are running. So I wanted to share here an example of uh, of the different programs that we had running in the past uh, last year online. We had great success from our online on online training, and we have now a new program for 2020. So what we do is we organize session with the top experts from our industry from uh, universities, from research centers uh, within Europe to share the knowledge that have been developed, that have been accumulated by these industries, by these members, to make sure we share it so all the members are on the same level and all members are going toward a higher technological uh, level. So you can find this program online on the Eurotrans uh, website and on our LinkedIn uh, page as well if you are uh, if you are following us and this is organized with our different uh, partner so, uh, associations but the uh, companies that are not members can also attend these uh, these uh, different trainings that are uh, uh, a key pillar of the uh, your trans organization we also have uh, uh, Top level market research because we have the advantage of having members that are active in a lot of different markets, a lot of different sectors, but also a lot of different uh, countries. So, uh, with the assistance of our uh, Swiss association, we are collecting on a regular basis a lot of different information. This can be on the market, on the trends, on the, the amount of, uh, of orders collected, and uh, how dynamic is the sector which sectors are working more than others and we provide this information back to our uh, members to show them where the market is going what are the different uh, uh, trends and what is the situation of the market today and and and, and where they can uh, see themselves in a, in the future as they have information from key players so to make sure they have the right market assessment uh, a short example here on the on the on the, on the online-based uh, survey that, uh, that, uh, that we are running. So uh, this, this can give you an example on, on, on how deep how deep and valuable we are. We are running this, uh, this different information and that are then shared to different members. Uh, 
a very important point here is our forecast for, for this year. As I said, the, the power transmission industry in Europe is a very dynamic market. And uh, we are, uh, although uh, the complex geopolitical situation, we are uh, sure that we have uh, an outgrowth. And based on the different information that we collected, we are forecasting now for 2022, 5-7% of growth um, for our, uh, our, our, our sector. This is a uh, challenging based on on sector of activities and and, and different segments, but we are we are confident uh, uh, for the future. So I would like to to thank you all for uh, for joining this uh, this presentation. We will have a, a short uh, a question and answer program after the presentation, and uh, uh, I would like to use this opportunity for for uh, for inviting you all to to join our network. You're all welcome to, to join our network. You're all welcome to follow us on different social medias to reach more information about our trainings, about our different uh, publication and our uh, different uh, different activities. So as I said in the presentation, we, we are stronger together. So uh, join us, discuss with us, and uh, let's build the future of our industry. Thank you very much.